Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another episode of Testing in Nutshell. This is Neeraj Kumar Singh and we are talking about Unified Functional Testing Tutorials. As a part of today's tutorial, we'll be getting started with our creation of very first test in UFT and understand that what are those steps which are required in order to proceed with creating a simple test and definitely running that. So of course, it may require a little bit of recording understanding for you, which will be much simple and user friendly for any individual to get started. All you need to do is click on a record button and start interacting with the application for which you want to capture the script and the script will be automatically populated. But of course, this is just a simple beginning to get started with the VB scripts and understanding of the UFT creating a particular test. Of course, after this, we'll be writing our own scripts and understanding in more detail that how to work with it. So let's get started with a simple script talking about creating a simple test in UFT. As a part of this tutorial, you will be understanding how to create a simple test in UFT, where you will also learn about what are add-ins, how to quickly navigate to some of the options in UFT, creating by recording a simple test, executing a test, and also viewing results as an outcome of that execution. In order to get started, all you need to do is just launch the UFT and confirm that you want to continue with the license which is you having as a evaluation license and click on continue as a part of this you will also the first thing which will be prompted with is the list of add-ins here we have a lot of add-ins which we installed in the previous video of setting up the UFT and uh, these add-ins are basically set of protocols which you are using for your application so when you work with different types of application you select that respective add-ins before you open the UFT that means that UFT wants you to know or UFT wants you to ask that what sort of application are you working and what kind of set of protocols or set of rules your application makes use of. As far as you're aware of your set of rules which your application is making use of, you can select them all here and click on OK. But right now for my application we are using ActiveX components and we are also making use of the web as well as WPF Silverlight component. But for you, if you have working on different other applications, just make sure that you select those respective add-ins and press OK. Now, once you get started with this add-in selection, you will be taken to the first look of UFT, which will give you some of the basic inputs on how you can interact with UFT. So right now, if you see, the very first look includes some of the menu options, but most of them are disabled as far as you get into the a particular test you will find more menu options on the top and more details with each of these options. On the other hand you do have a quick access toolbar at the bottom uh, where you can just quickly launch or create a new test open and do the same jobs what you can do from the menu bar. On the left you do find something called a solution explorer which helps you to manage all the configuration which you're using for your test and this can separately be saved just to use it for any other test as well. Plus at the bottom if you see you have another tab here called as toolbox which is basically to include functions and methods at any point of time. This can be synced or it can be added and can be used all together. Also to add here on the right side you do would see the new button and open button so you can create a new test or you can open an existing test. Also it will display you the recently used test which you have worked upon and you can directly open some of the tests which you recently worked upon from here itself. On the right you would find more details about what's new in this version, what more is going to come up, what's the licensing and all about. So a lot of information can be read right from here. At the bottom you have quick links to the forum and uh, you don't have to really go to any other blog spots or you don't have to go to any other page to ask your questions and search on Google. Rather you can just go to this forum and quickly type in your query and they will get back to you with your answer. Also if you want you can connect your professional accounts and get uh, you know all the news latest news with UFT right here on this particular panel. More we'll be talking slowly as we proceed with it. So let's get started and create a new test here. As we click on the new button here it allows me to create different options like I can go for a GUI test, I can go for an API load test, 
I can go for API test as well, which is the simple one without performance. And we have business process testing, business process flow testing as well. So you can, if you want, you can rename your test right here, whatever you want to name it, and save it as whatever you want. It is also possible that you can save it as whatever you want at a later point of time also, if you don't want to name it right now. Click on create and we'll be getting started with GUI test. We'll be learning about other tutorials, uh, other of these options in our future tutorial series. Once you create a test, by default you'll get few things which you don't really have to create in UFT. In UFT, when you create a test, you get three things by default. Number one, you get an action, which is the place where you write your script. You get a repository, which is the storage for all the objects and their respective properties. If you click on this button, it will take you to the local repository. As you can see, right now the button says add objects to local. So you get a local repository by default. And also you get a data sheet at the bottom, which is action one. So you see, you get a local action sheet to pass data to the script during the runtime. So when you create a new test, you get three things by default. One is an action to write the script, a local repository, and a data sheet at the data table. The next few things is to understand that how to record a simple test and get started with it. Now, of course, there are different ways to do it. You can interact with any application right now on your Windows, which can be Notepad, it could be Paint, it could be Windows Media Player, or anything else which you are using currently. But I'll be using a dummy application or a demo application which is provided by UFT itself called as Flight GUI and Flight API. API is for the API testing and GUI is for GUI testing. So when you install UFT, these applications will be installed by default. You don't have to do a separate installation with this. So you just click on the Flight GUI to launch it. Now this application works on the WF, WPF Silverlight add-in. That's the reason I selected it. So now this application is a demo application about booking a flight and anyone can just work on it as far as you know how to interact with it. That I'll be telling you as a part of my tutorial and you'll get to know a lot of things about it. Now to get started to create a very first test of our learning session in UFT, we'll be using the record session today. Recording is very simple for anyone, no matter do you have any knowledge about automation or not, do you know anything about VB script or not, you can still record the session and replay this. Now here, there's a record button which will allow you to quickly record the actions on the application. The very first thing you need to know about recording a script is that whatever you do on the application will be captured. If you don't perform that operation on the application, UFT will not capture that object or anything related to that object. So the only these steps which you perform while your recording is on will be automatically captured and created as a VB script. So here I am having this application open on my screen. I click on record button, which just turns on the option as, you know, do you want to continue with Windows application and do you have any specific settings? We will talk about these settings in our upcoming tutorials you just have to say okay at this point of time and you would see that your UFT has come down minimized and given you a recording pane which has some options like stop recording pause recording switch to different actions create a new action or change the recording type we will be talking about everything what you see and many more things for example object spy and all so right now let's work with this application and perform some of the activities so here my username is John and the password is HP and press OK. And that your credential remains same for everyone. It's not that you have to sign up and create an account. You can just use the dummy account details for doing this job. Now if you see right now I've performed three steps. So three steps have been captured. Now here these are all called as my objects, whatever you see. And if you interact with these objects, then only UFT will capture an event for it. If you don't interact with any object here, you won't find the script related to that. For example, let me drop down and select the city here, Paris uh, to London. And I don't interact with the data field. I just go with class. I go with tickets and click on find flights. 
There are a list of available flights which are displayed to me. I just select one of them and click on select flight. Now I've been asked with the passenger name. I just mentioned my name here and I can be reviewed with all the information I provided and click on order. That's it. The order is now placed and I have a order number generated. Once the order number is generated, you have an option to continue with a new search or even you can delete this order which is equivalent to canceling a flight which you just booked. Or else you can just close this which is kind of log off for this application. You don't have a log out button but just closing this will lead to log out of this option. Now you can stop recording and see your first look of the script. Now, UFT makes use of VB script as a language for interacting with the application and creating any sort of framework or control flow. To just quickly understand what is the format being used for the VB script, it's very simple and easy to understand. The ones in the blank are the object class, like WPF window, WPF edit, WPF button, WPF combo box, WPF table, and a lot many other things. So all the ones in the black are your classes, whereas the one in the red with the double quotes is called as the object name. So in simple terms, the script line number one is telling you that go to this type of window, which is named as HPE My Flight Sample Application. I think there is a typo in the property, and we will tell you like purposefully they have done for some reason to cross verify. Then dot as separator in the hierarchy. So this is my parent object till here. Okay, then inside this, if you find it, go to WPF edit box, which is a text box, which is named as agent name. So here your username is named as agent name, and then comes the method dot set to John. Similarly, when it comes to password, we find out the parent object first, then we go to the child object as password and enter this value. Remember, UFT maintains the security of the password which you enter, so it automatically generates an encrypted value here not the password otherwise anyone can hack somebody's password and so on but when it comes to you passing the values you just have to change the method to start set instead of dot secure and you can pass the value whatever you try fit or what is your password is all about similarly if you see that when you work with different object types you have different methods to operate for example combo box has dot select buttons have dot click edit box has dot set and so on. Again, table has a reference of the coordinates like which cell and which table, which column you use it, and so on. So this script is quite simple and easy to write yourself as well. But today we are just getting started with a simple recording session. So we just want to understand how the script looks like, how to create a basic test, and then later you will learn how to write the script on your own. Now it's time. I think we are good to go and we are good to run the script. So right next to the recording button, you have a run button as well. But if you remember, I did not record a script to launch my application. So I will just give the application on the screen and then click on run button. Confirm the run. And now you would see that on side by side, the script is getting executed. It will just perform the same thing. And that's it. Now you'll be automatically taken to a new tab which shows the execution of the test which you just executed, the result. So now you see the test flow and it gives me a green tick which means that everything has succeeded, it has passed and you also find all the steps detailed step by step that each line of script has passed. This is very useful like the step by detail is very useful to debug your script in case any particular step fails. You know that at what point the script failed and you can directly work with this. If you clicked on a particular step, it will show you the details of the step on the right side. Like what was the step all about, what was the data which you passed, what was the time during the execution when it was performed, what was the object name, what repository was used, was the object path to detect it, and the properties related to it. So that's very detailed and very interesting to come with. Now this result component is inbuilt within UFT. You don't have to again install or configure anything like Selenium. Everything comes in world. You don't really have to do anything. You just have to get started. So you can very well interact with these scripts which are very detailed. 
If in case your test fails, you will find your error list on the left side panel and right now we do not have one of them. So that basically gives you a overcome on overview on everything what do you need to understand in order to create a script. So coming back to the date of uh, application, if you remember the date of flight, I didn't interact with this, so at this point you won't find a script which talks about the date. So UFT captures only the steps which you perform, not just everything on the application to keep it light and to the point. Well, so that was all from this particular tutorial team. We'll be getting back to you with more steps and more details one after the other. So stay tuned for that. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.